Hello! Oh, that's hard to believe. This is more devil on the D string. What is? Sami and I sat in the coffee shop, Lapis Lazuli, a little after 6 o'clock. This popular hangout becomes a restaurant at night. I never asked for your help. You and I? They're pretty annoying, you know that? わかってますよ。あなたが私を嫌ってるってことくらい。<laughs> <laughs> <laughs> you know that you hate her. Uh, okay, well, so he is just trying to figure out his mal is, and he's got his own thing with the Yakuza boss fodder. So I'm gonna say definitely. Like, why would you think this girl is something that you would accept? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Seems like you understand it well enough. Sami's feelings forced her to look away. How rare. Soska. Yeah. It's crazy. But she's so good though. Like if he knows him her better, she could be useful. She nodded as though she wanted to say something. Wait a second. It's the weekend. Why are you wearing your school uniform? そんな話がしたいわけじゃないでしょ。I'm here to talk about Mao. I skipped to the point. 来ましたね。Tension appeared on Usami's face. Are you looking for Mao? アザイさんもですか? Yes. どうしてまた急に? What can I tell Usami? I can't mention anything about the Zai Corporation. Last night, I received an email. Maokara? Donna? I can't say for certain that it was from the same Mao, but it said, Oh, come, lovely child. Oh, come hell with me. For many a game, I will play there with thee. Purely in Hiragana. That was all. Mao desu. What makes you so sure? Why did Azai-san to Mao? This woman isn't listening to a word I say. I'm helping my papa with his work. Didn't Subaki tell you about that? Okay, what were you saying, Usami? Precisely, I'm just trying to help Papa. That's rather direct. I can't tell you that. What do you mean by that? So what about you? Why are you looking for Mao? A reason? What reason? Then at least riddle me this. What clues have you come across so far? Usami closed her eyes. Mao is a Japanese. Maybe 
日本語に精通し日本の音楽教育を受けたことのある人間です。かわいい坊やおいでよ面白い遊びをしようとはゲーテの詩を思いっきり日本人が教科書で習うような翻訳の仕方です。さらに外国人は日本語に漢字を用いることを知っています。面白い遊びこれは外国人でも変換できる簡単な漢字です。それをあえてひらがなで表現してくるあたり不気味さを演出するための愉快犯的な思考が伺えます。This girl came up with that much using just a single line of words. そして魔王は少なくともあなたのメールアドレスを知っている人物です。True. Nevertheless, this isn't enough evidence to single out anyone. なかなか友人が多いみたいですね。You're not here to profile me. What about you? 自分っすか You transferred schools at a bizarre time. Did you do it to find Mel? But what? Huh? Go ahead. Come to think of it, she's only had water so far. They won't have it. Can't you tell that just by looking at this place? So you do have a cute side. <laughs> I take that back. She's not cute at all. The menu is not a good t h i You saw me stared at the menu, giving off the aura of a normal teenage girl for once. I'll just order something for you. Is there anything you don't like? Tomato. To say, I'm going 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 アザイさんのおっしゃる通り、自分がこのトマンベツ市にやってきたのは、魔王を追ってきたからです。In pursuit? You've been following him for a while? はい。それも何年も探していますよ。Years. <laughs> And you still haven't found him? <laughs> 残念ながら。ただ、最近になって、魔王の犯罪の特徴がつかめるようになってきました。The waiter poured some orange juice into her cup. Usami sucked it up little by little like a woodpecker. <laughs> The way you drink is disgusting. <laughs> 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 That was nothing like a penguin. No, I didn't. Nope, doesn't ring a bell. I read two newspapers a day, and I check the news on my cell phone every chance I get. So why? まあいいです。簡単に言うと、5人組のグループが消費者金融の金庫を襲撃したんですよ。それも、ただの1件じゃなくて、3ヶ月で約10店舗。被害総額は5000万人も及ぶそうです。どうして世間を賑わせたかというと、少年たちが、いわゆる悪徳金融と呼ばれる闇金しか狙わなかったからです。まあ、義足を気取ってたわけですね。手口は実に鮮やかだったそうですよ
アメリカのギャングが強盗に用いる手段で5人とも統制の取れた動きで盗みに入ったそうです Then how did they get caught? どうも金をめぐって仲間内で揉めたらしいですね Something about this made my heart race. So basically, what happened was the brain behind the operation, Mal, taught the kids how to commit crime and let them carry it out. Which makes this incident identical to the one I'm investigating now. Which in turn resembles the way that I, as the brain of the Azai Corporation, use people. Mao <laughs> wa. 子供こそ最大の手駒だと思っているんです。世間慣れしてなくて、純真な心を持つ子供たちなら、たやすく悪の道に引きずり込むことができます。That's exactly what Azai Gonzo taught, taught when you took me in.Still, that bit of news alone brought you to Tillman Betsu. はい。手がかりがあれば、必ず私も追いかけます。You're pretty persistent. <laughs> Usami grinned. <laughs> hmm? I'm going to be a little bit of a l i あなたがいたからですよ。She was staring at me again, as if seeing through the depths of my pupils. Me? My heart jumped again. Who saw me drink the juice in her disgusting way once more? <laughs> And then said, Kimi wa. 勇者になるんだね。Then, mm. My memory felt jumbled and disorganized, leaving me in discomfort. Who saw me? I'm sorry. I took out two ten thousand yen bills and placed them on the table. I don't feel so well. I'm heading out. So, s k a Remember to return the change next time. I stood up and sighed. Contact me if you discover anything about Mao. Hi. Is s h o n i Mao or Sangashima s h o I left the restaurant without looking back. Put a pressure on. It does get a little cold, so I think I should wear a sweatshirt while I'm recording. Kyosuke. Oh. Sorry, said that, and I didn't need to read it. The wind coursed by him as he stepped outside. A horde of tall buildings stood all around him, blocking the moonlight. Not yet entirely awake, Mao walked up the steps like a sweetwalker, wandering purposelessly through、Usa. the night. Hot. A name slowly emerged from his lips. A girl appeared from the sea of his memory. A gallant, heroic figure. o m o i d a s h i t a Mao felt his head clear as confidence filled his heart. So, Ka. Usami no Musume Ka. So, Ka. The snapshots in his memory snapped into place. Kishini Watashi o Sangashi iru no daro na. And not only Usami, as I Gonzo and his wild beast should all be angrily scouring for Mao right now. Depending on the situation, the plan may have to be changed. There was still time to revise it before Mao's magnum opus was set into action. Even the slightest obstacle could be a premature end to the long awaited fruit of his ambition. Mao laughed, 
It might be fun to have a strong hero as a rival. A number of intricate plans began to come together in Mouse Head. Usami Haru. Eh. The little hero has finally grown up. Let this girl pay for her parents. Let's play a little game. Usami Haru. How far can you go? Mao disappeared into the darkness of downtown Tomenbetsu City with light footsteps. His head didn't ache anymore. The cool night drew its curtains. Hmm. On this particular Sunday, like on any other, Central Boulevard hosted a sea of people. And as usual, Usami Hara walked to her part-time job with her head hung low. She moved forward slowly, ignoring the people around her. A bearded man in an apron welcomed Haru. Kami! Haru bowed slightly. The manager shook his head in response as he opened a crate of perfumes. Mm. The manager let a disappointed sigh escape from his lips. I guess you should. Cut your hair, depending on the job. Haru yawned as she stretched her back and neck. After preparing herself for a day's work, she entered the store. But she does have pretty hair, though. The manager reached into the pocket of his apron. It was a folded piece of paper. A letter, perhaps. The manager was a good man, despite, as Haru suspected, frequently lying about his age. Haru glanced absentmindedly at the manager's beard as she unfolded the note. And after scanning its contents, she couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. The penmanship itself gave Haru an eerie, unsettled feeling. The writer had used a straight edge to trace his strokes, presumably to camouflage his true handwriting. Some letters had even been cut from magazines and newspapers. After taking a deep breath, Haru asked, The manager raised his eyebrows. The girl before him was not the Usami Haru he employed. Her piercing eyes fired straight through his entirety. Usami Haru is here to Haru tensed up. Time seemed to have stopped. Her mind analyzed the facts with incomprehensible speed. And finally, as if to signify her understanding, she raised her hand. Head. She bowed deeply. だいたいな。うさみは面接の時から常識がなさそうだったが。すいません、非常識で。まあ、今まで一度も遅刻も早引きもしてないし、バイトなのに進んで残業してくれるし。頼んでもいないのに着ぐるみを作って宣伝をしてくれたりと真面目なところもあるわけだが持ち上げてくれているところすみませんが着ぐるみはただの趣味ですそうあみ。ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って、ちょっと待って
Oh, come, lovely child. Oh, come thou with me. For many a game I will play there with thee. From this, the first line, Hard could tell this letter indicated a challenge. The rest of the letter served to ignite her heart into a mighty conflagration. For at its end was her mother's name. I am here in Tomembetsu City. Let us play a game of tag. I will be attending the hunt immediately. To Kaoru. Kaoru is the name of Haru's beloved mother. She was a violinist. She took Haru with her as she traveled all around the world, captivating the world with, over with her marvelous performances. Her mother was always so gentle, yet so strong. No. Calm down, she told herself. If you let your emotions get the better of you, then you've already lost. She couldn't believe that. Would I, would I actually contact her? Oh, come, lovely child. Oh, come thou with me. For many a game I will play there with thee. In that particular Schubert piece, no matter how much the child cried out about the devil, his father refused to believe that the devil even existed. No one could find this fabled Earl Connick, this, this <laughs> devil, this now. <laughs> It's now noon. Wearing a big black suit, Mal blended in naturally among the crowd of businessmen in the business district. As he walked among the people there, Mal's heart swelled with malicious anticipation. It's been a while since he sent out that letter of challenge, passed on from one person to the next. The letter should have arrived in Yasami's hand by now. What would she do when she saw that letter? I wonder if she'll search around the city endlessly. Mal looked at the cell phone in his hand. If Yasami isn't a total idiot, she will soon call this number. Haru already knew where to go. She didn't waste a single minute. Even though the letter from the exclamation point looked me unless at first point, she made sure to place a hit within those words. <laughs> The coffee shop, Lapis Lazuli, the same place that Kyosuke took her yesterday. She pushed open the door and walked in. She immediately surveyed the premises. If Haru's reasoning was correct, question mark, the exclamation point should have gone by anger. <laughs> However, she could not find anyone like him among their customers. Just then, a man who appeared to be an employee called out to him. Haru thought for a second before answering confidently. <laughs> The host seemed to relieve upon her words. As he said this, he disappeared behind the counter. After a while, he returned with a small bag. If you have a long hair, you can give me some more money. Haru asked if she took the bag from me. Haru immediately realized that the young girl was one of Mao's children. Oz where he was using several intermediaries to get in contact with her. It'd be difficult to trace any of these agents back to me. Haru left the coffee shop after offering her things. As she walked out, Haru opened the bag. She found only a thin cell phone inside. This is. She examined the cell phone from top to bottom. It was an old model. Where's <laughs> so so You know, Central Boulder, you can find a lot of unemployed foreigners selling these phones. Even if the police were to investigate this matter, they wouldn't be able to find the phone's original purchaser. It would appear that, yeah, they didn't know how to recover this tracks. Turn <laughs> turned on the phone, there was only one number listed. The number that was listed as... Her heart raced. She dialed the number with sweaty hands. At that moment, the din of the city no longer reached her ears. After precisely ten minutes, A weak vibration came from the left side of his chest. He grinned. Someone's calling. Trying to suppress his excitement, he took out the phone. 
He waited for his caller to speak first, as he imagined his hot and beautiful voice. Oh. He was taken aback by the abrupt voice. He quietly opened his mouth. There was a brief pause, as if she were gathering her nerves. And Tommy spoke in a low voice. Indeed, that was a bit too simple. The next line caused Usami's voice to betray her. She could not conceal her English as she recited the final words. He intentionally chose biting words, as if playing the part of a typical twisted villain, but this did not deter Usami Haru in the slightest. This really was a simple puzzle. I'd be quite disappointed if she couldn't even solve this. The purpose behind this puzzle lied elsewhere. That was a bad accident. Again, he tried to play with her emotions. Usami ignored Mao's words while continuing to describe her solution to the simple puzzle. During this entire exchange, Usami Haru did not show a hint of anger. Mao had hoped that his refusal to let the dead rest would unleash the darkness within this girl's heart, that it would reopen long closed wounds. Nevertheless, Usami said to Mao felt satisfied. This girl was daring indeed. Even as she listened intently to the phone, Haru continued searching for the location of Mao. Ignoring the demon's scathing words, she instead focused on the background noise. After a while, she discovered some clues. Haru again concentrated on the background noise. Part of the speech included the theme of Tomibetsu City's mayor. This tone implied it would be more strange if she hadn't. Haru finally understood the true reason behind Mao's challenge. He wants to test her. She was in a terrible situation. She didn't expect her opponent to find her workplace. Even though Haru still doesn't know his identity, Mao already knows her. バラしていいのか。戦闘ロフィスの場所はわかるか。引っ越してきて間もないのだろう。よく知っているな。お前のことが何でも知っていた。勇者。何でも知っているという決まり文句は実は知らないこともあるので不安だという気持ちの裏返
He certainly sounded happy, but his words seemed a little artificial. As a result, she still couldn't figure them out. And unfortunately for her, he was always guiding their conversation. Even when Mal talks about himself, he never gives anything important away. それがどうした園内の掲示板の前に来てもらおうかそこに行けば魔王に会えるのか違う早いお互いの理解を深めるためにも顔を合わせて話し合った方がいいと思う魅力的な提案だが丁重に断らせてもらう It seems Mal has no intention of showing his face. This is a challenge. And with that, he hung up the phone. Haru sprang into action. She caught sight of the Sano Corporation headquarters. The park was nearby, somehow escaping the shadow of the dark entrance skyscraper. It was quite a beautiful scene. The park was surrounded by an assortment of bustling businesses, making its presence even more pronounced. The bulletin board was at the center of the park. Under normal circumstances, it would display the general guidelines and park rules. Today, though, it's covered in micro reading. At first glance, it appears to be the work of local delinquents. Close examination, however, reveals that the markings are actually a rather detailed passage. It was clear that this graffiti was the work of now. From here, the hero must choose one of three paths. One path leads to Mal, one path leads to Hell, one path leads to Heaven. There will be more information on each path. Take care to examine it thoroughly. Truth is written on the path to Mal. Lies are written on the path to Hell. Truths, lies, and half-truths are written on the path to Hell. Oh. Now, can you find where I am? <laughs> Haru immediately began to search around the park. As was indicated, there should be a message located near the path. She soon found that message near the park's northern entrance. There was a steep staircase leading to the business district. The handrail of the stone staircase bore a short note, in the same blaring red paint and long slender lettering as the message in the park. The exit of subway station 10 leads to heaven. She could just barely make it out. Hara immediately absorbed the information. Station 10 just so happens to be Central Boulevard's main station. Haru could not see several red-haired youngsters loitering near the exit. Haru carefully examined her surroundings until she finally saw another message on the handrail. Warehouse number 3 along the docks of the Western District leads to Hill. It was too far to reach by foot. However, if she doesn't go to that warehouse, she won't be able to solve the puzzle. Tag, indeed. Do you plan to have me run around the entire city? No. <laughs> Haru walked down the stairs. There were just as many people in this underground passageway as there were on the surface. She bought a ticket and now awaits the subway to the Western District. For someone as poor as Haru, the 250 yen ticket really is a painful expense. After about an hour, she finally reached the harbor. The winter sea quietly splashed against the dock. This part of the city is deserted on Sundays. Thus, she found the warehouses without fighting the crowd she had earlier. The third warehouse's number was clearly marked on its closed shutters. Harder searched for a message from now. She found a suspicious slip of paper on the shutter. This is not the path to heaven. After reading this final clue, Haru pinched her forehead. Now she finally has all the pieces. Which of the three paths should she take? Oh, <laughs> the staircase near the park. One, the staircase near the park. Two, the exit of subway station 10. Three, warehouse number three along the docks of the western district. Yes. <laughs> the path to Mal. The path to heaven. The path to hell. Which message corresponds to which path? Obviously, she needs to pick the path to Mal. In addition, <laughs> Truth is written on the path to hell. Lies are written on the path to hell. 
Truths, lies, and half-truths are written on the path to heaven. Now Laurie thinks about where she found each note. <laughs> One on the handrail of the stairway near the park with some note. The exit of subway station 10 leads to heaven. The side exit of subway station was the note. Two besides, yes. Warehouse number three along docks of the Western District leads to hell. At the third warehouse in the Western District was the note. This is not the path to heaven. So if that's a lie, then after sorting everything, she began to analyze the information. Suppose number one is the path to now. In that case, the message found there about Subway Station 10, that is, the path to heaven, would have to be true. To find the answer, you only need to do some calculations. Just as she was in the middle of thinking, Carter's cell phone rang. Oh, oh. It's getting tense. <laughs> <laughs> Mao must have calculated the time she needed to reach here, and time just fall accordingly. Mao glanced at his watch. Mao <laughs> Mao thought to himself, this is just a test. Any capable person should be able to find the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> if you can find the answer in five minutes, then I'll give you a passing grade. Just as he was about to hang up. Dai-san-soko. <laughs> If that's the path. Now listen to Isami attentively. Indeed, anyone with a good sense of logic could quickly figure out the answer. If you discard all the unnecessary information, it really is just a simple equation. As Isami implied, one can just lay out the six possible scenarios and cross out the ones that cannot be true. <laughs> that's it, Isami figured it all out in an instant. Plus, she didn't need to use pen and paper. She solved it all mentally. <laughs> Mao did not respond. <laughs> she really has a rare talent. A faint smile appeared at the corner of his lips. Mao finally acknowledged that Sami Haru as an opponent. From the research she had one of his people do on her, she did not seem to have any power, wealth, or connection, but she possessed a keen mind seemingly unbelievable for a teenage girl. Now he thought that his only opposition would come from large, powerful organizations, like the police and influential corporations. In addition, this talented girl has been looking endlessly for her. Initiating contact with her this morning may have been a bit of a rash decision. His defeat may now lay in a place he had never expected. Usami would quickly break through the other games Mao had prepared. Well, it's not a big deal. Yeah, she's still just a student. And it's probably safe to say that she has almost no information on me yet. However, Mao knew firsthand how far the combination of a talented mind supported by unwavering conviction can bring someone. This hero may indeed find a weakness in Mao's carefully constructed plan. On one hand, Mao felt a rush of excitement from witnessing such a powerful opponent. On the other, in order to not lose to his opponent, Mal felt a surge of his fighting spirit. Uh, the sun had set only moments ago. In its place came the strong winter wind, carrying a chill and dark clouds in its wake. Specks of white snow fell on the shoulders of our school uniform before quickly dissipating. Good thing I didn't have to solve that myself, like Uma Nekor would have humiliated myself again. Pedestrians flooded the business district. At the bottom of this gov the government office stairway, Haru awaits Mao's appearance. He will, he 
he will come. After that exchange, Mal played another three hours of tag with her. Again and again, he tested her mental prowess. In order to make herself worthy of being Mal's opponent, Haru ought to have shown enough of her strength to gain the right to challenge Mal. I was just thinking she went to the that path. Oh come, oh my child, oh come out with me. For many a game I will play there with thee. Mal may think this is just a game, but this is a battle horror will put all her strength into. And because it said this is the path to hell or heaven, Mal's final question was this. If Mal appears at the bottom of the stairs of the government office, then Hero is not at the top of the stairs. Thus, if Hero is at the top of the stairs, will Mal not appear at the bottom of the stairs? And on that path is a lie, so that was the right path. In the conclusion, if Hiro is at the top of the stairs, Mao will not appear at the bottom. If she wants Mao to appear, Mar Haru must not be at the top of the stairs. In order to meet with Mao, Haru needs to stay at the bottom of the stairs. Only he's taking too long. She could not see anyone like Mao among the passing people. Did I make a mistake? Just as she started to panic, she heard someone call her name. Uh. <laughs> Haru looked up at the stair. Wait, look at up the stairs. Ningen wa omoshiro yo na. Zatto no naka. Dore dake maari ga sawagashiku temo, jibun no namae o yobareru to tsui furikaette shimau. Haru realized that she had indeed made a mistake. She figured as long as she waited downstairs, Mao would appear there. During their prolonged game of tag, Haru had grown so focused on solving the numerous riddles he presented. So focused that she had forgotten that Mao may have set the trap within the riddles themselves. Mao now drew her attention freely, without worry, from a place where she could not see clearly. him clearly. Okay. A man in a large black coat spoke those seductive words, but he stood with his back to the light of the street lamp, washing his feather features into the blackness. Is this man Mao, or just one of his underlings? Huh? Haru asked the mysterious person, he should be a man. She couldn't really discern the voice at all, though. She thought she may even vaguely recognize the voice, and she couldn't even discount the possibility of the voice belonging to a woman. The girl straightened her posture. Hmm. She realized her whole body was trembling. Haru clenched her fist to suppress her apprehension. The fear she held slowly drew near. This is no longer a game. The battle has begun. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, I want to show these though. They look so cool. These opening movies. Look at this. Dude, I'm not muting this. It's cool. <laughs> Very good setup. Oh, so that's all of chapter one. Sweet. <laughs> Looks like the story really begins now. Hey, bye. <laughs>